Coming up, a new Pinkerton prototype, a Fisher Blades Beckwith trainer, and these knives should be in horror movies. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, one of my favorite comments from this past week was from Dan Eterios, and it was on a video that I cryptically titled Crushing Ennui with the V44X Bowie or The Long Journey to Breakfast. And really what it was was me sitting down, showing, uh, trying to start a fire and eventually doing so with my V44X Bowie and kind of using it as a therapy therapy session and uh, discussing my ennui, my creeping sense of dissatisfaction. Uh, and Dan Eterio says, when you split the wood so close to your foot, I know, uh, it reminded me of the one time where I hit my shin with a big splitting axe. My buddy put a very gnarly piece of wood on the block. I wanted to chop it in half with one swing. So I measured the distance with the axe and went for the swing in one go. The axe glanced off the wood and the side of the axe had hit my shin. It was so fast, I couldn't even see it coming. Long story short, be careful when you swing some big pieces of steel around. Well, Dan Eterios, uh, I hear you 100%. And uh, when I was watching it back, uh, it's funny, watching it back before I, I uploaded it, I was like, oh, uh, I, I kind of didn't, you know, I was just sitting there doing it and recording it. But when I saw the recording of it, I, it reminded me of when my brother almost chopped his leg off with a big piece of steel. So, yes, uh, absent-mindedness is bad and wrong around sharp things. Uh, I almost did myself in a moment ago. Uh, it happens all the time uh, with an unsheathed Pinkerton prototype, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Uh, thanks for the comments, Dan Eterios, And uh, a lot of people commented on that video. I got a lot of helpful, uh, hey, get this kind of thing for fire starting. Get this kind of thing. Uh, don't swing steel close to your foot. I got a lot of really helpful uh, tidbits and hints from people. Thank you. Thank you for not, uh, uh, you know, uh, calling me out for being a total noob uh, out in the, in the wilderness. It was fun. It was a fun video. And thanks for watching. All right. That said, let's get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. In my pocket today and every day since I got it is the uh, new Civivi Sentinel Strike 2. The Sentinel Strike 2. You might remember the one. Uh, the Sentinel Strike 1 has that really cool Warncliffe blade. Well, this has a really cool drop point blade. One of the coolest on record. I'll say it. I'll say it. It's got a um, compound grind with a main hollow portion down here, uh, hollow, very hollow, and very hollow, very thin and quite hollow. And then you can see the transition with this, this uh, reaching arc here, and it transitions to that flat up at the tip. Uh, nice swedge here going all the way to the back. Excellent jimping. You've got thumb studs, you've got flipper, and then you've got the same exact frame as the original Sentinel Strike uh, with the Warncliffe blade. You have that integral uh, back strap there that uh, uh, kind of goes, well, it doesn't kind of go over. It goes from one side to the other. It com comprises half of the handle on one side, the full backspacer, and then half the handle on the other. The rest is aluminum. Uh, so pretty sturdy knife and um, has a great uh, spine whackable um, button lock. I was using this outside and did some uh, fat wood, a little bit of fat wood cutting. I wanted to get some super tiny little curls and this delivered. And the funny thing is, is I look at this knife and I think total modern chores, but it was nice to carve with. Truly a pleasure to carve with this. And with that aluminum handle, I really felt like uh, it was, I don't know, a pretty solid knife to be using. Now, if that were FRN, it would steal, you know, if this were a bug out with the with the cheesiest of FRN handles, and by cheesy, I just mean kind of thin, uh, it would still feel pretty solid. But this aluminum, right on. I love it. I love aluminum handled uh, knives, and I'm a huge fan of the Sentinel Strike. And now 
uh, the Sentinel Strike 2. I might even be a bigger fan of this than the original. Got to say, I love that blade. And actually looking at it right there, it looks kind of like a shark. Uh, yeah, that's what I see. All right, next up, I see a Bionic Jack. Uh, this is the Bionic Jack, the new one from Jack Wolf Knives, the new one as I speak to you here at the end of October 2024. Um, this was their October knife, and uh, the Bionic is based on the um cyborg jack and the cyborg jack is um mr ben belkin's original design i'm gonna put a piece of paper under here it's a kind of a dirty piece of paper uh but it's a piece of paper to show you the exact uh and angular contours of that handle uh, that is all ben belkin he wanted a curved sort of uh, you know, curve sort of handle for those ergonomics, but he put those uh, straight angles on and man, it is very, very comfortable. This is a large version uh, at one and a quarter inches long. Uh, I say large, the, um, the original Cyborg Jack has a just under three inch blade. And then they recently released the mini Cyborg Jack, which uh, had a two and a half inch blade, I believe, or two and a quarter inch blade, uh, kind of the same size as the uh, uh, little bro. Great, great knife. Uh, they have, Jack Wolf Knives has proved themselves with this format, in this format. This is a bolster lock. So uh, integrated uh, frame, um, I'm sorry, integrated titanium bolsters and liners here. Full, full back frame there to, to make it look, I'm sorry, full backspacer here to make it look more like a slip joint. Uh, <clears throat> jimping on the blade, that really beautiful uh, sort of California clip uh, with a very high uh, sharpening choil, excellent action, really nice access to the lock bar. Uh, great flicker. I've been using this a lot with my left hand. I've been carrying it in my back left pocket. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, carbon fiber. There's another one, another iteration of this that's stunning with the black blade and the um, and the the real dark titanium with the red carbon fiber, much like the Venom Jack I got a few months back that I uh, was always waxing poetic about. It looks like an artifact. It really does, I swear. Well, they have that whole uh, beautiful new colorway available on the uh, Bionic bionic jack okay next up my um fixed blade knife was the nova 2 the nova 2 these are now in process uh with mr matt chase at hogtooth knives um just one of my favorite knives to carry period uh, i love the format the format comes from his tanto so his edc tanto had the same handle obviously different blades so uh, we did this one and we did the nova one the recurve bowie uh last year on this same, this same platform. I was saying format, you know what I mean? Same platform, super comfortable handle. Uh, Matt, Matt's hands are much bigger than mine and uh, they fit his, this fits his hand really well. Um, well, as the, as the designer of the, or an originator of that handle, you would imagine it would. And uh, fits my hand really well too. Great in reverse grip. Uh, I love this thing in reverse grip. This is how I've been carrying it uh, pretty much in the three o'clock. I, it depends on what um, what knife I'm carrying, whether I'm carrying it up front or in the three o'clock position. I know uh, that combatives people will say uh, you have to wear it in the same place every time and preferably the same knife. And I would agree with you, but I'm not getting in the knife fights. Thank God. Uh, knock on wood and thank God. I don't know. I thank God first and then knock on wood. Yeah, it's like trusting God, but tie up your camel. Uh, so uh, those of you who have ordered this, uh, you can expect it once they're done. They're, they just started, so it'll be a while. Uh, we're looking at Christmas time. All right, uh, next up is my emotional support knife, my ESK. Oh, and by the way, thank you to those who ordered. I didn't mean to just uh, make light of the fact that you have to wait longer to get that. Uh, but we kept the pre-order open a while, and uh, so... But he's working on them now. Uh, and this is the Ladakh from Fred Perrin and Francis Max Knives. Uh, really cool little dagger. Uh, comes with nothing on the handle. Just a raw handle for you to put slabs on or to leave super discreet. I kind of went halfway and put uh, jute 
the jute cord on there. Uh, that's why I got this. I like knives with uh, jute cord handles, and uh, this was very inexpensive. I love Fred Perrin's uh, stuff, and I love Max Knives stuff. I have, uh, well, four of them now, and this dagger is sweet. It's pretty inexpensive. It's 440C, uh, so, you know, it's not going to be your favorite outdoors go-to knife, <clears throat> but that's not why you're buying this. Uh, this one, actually, there were the portions of the day where I could not uh, really have my Nova 2 because it got un unexpectedly warm, unexpectedly by me because I didn't check the weather. Uh, so at times I, I had to take the Nova 2 out of my belt, but this was always hanging around my neck. Um, this is a great knife, hangs light. It's pretty big for uh, this is definitely on the outside of what I will uh, neck carry, but it's so thin and light that it's uh, it's pretty easy. Plus, uh, my daughter made me this braided leather uh, thing to wear it a thing, braided uh, leather necklace to wear it on. So it it's uh, it's got a nice broad sort of uh, it's got a lot of surface area, so it doesn't annoy you. I feel like oftentimes um, neck knives are annoying around the neck because there's you know, surface area to, to weight. It's not good enough. It feels like you're being garroted, but this right here uh, works great. So this is what I had on me. What'd you have on you? Uh, I had a Warncliffe, a dagger, a Bowie, and a drop point. Uh, let me know what blade shapes you had on you. And of course, uh, give me the specifics. Uh, that matters to me. It matters to everyone uh, who's here anyway. Uh, so <clears throat> that's what we got, putting this away. Next up, uh, we have Knife Life News. But before we get there, I want to uh, remind you that uh, we will have another Knife Junkie giveaway, uh, Gentleman Junkie giveaway in on the, th you know what, in November. We'll, we'll give you the date. We'll get you the date. I always get thrown off by Thanksgiving. We do not have that knife ready yet. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but it'll be sweet. Uh, we got some sweetness to live up to here, so it'll be good. <clears throat> if you want to get involved in that, just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, see what we have to offer there, or you can scan that QR code right on the screen. Uh, a couple of different tiers of support, and one of those is the Gentleman Junkie. You could check in here every third Thursday of the month uh, at Thursday Night Knives for your Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway. All right, coming up, we got Knife Life News. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. There is a really cool new one from Best Tech. First of all, I love Best Tech. Uh, they're uh, definitely one of the best OEMs out there uh, for folding knives, for sure. But they also have a lot of great things under their own uh, shingle. And this is a collaboration with a new talent, uh, a very, uh, I guess, a young and new knife maker uh, named James Arnold from Horizon Machine Works. And uh, James, if you're just new to the scene and not young, I just... Uh, gave you your youth back. Uh, anyway, this one is called the Best Tech Clastic. The Clastic. Last week we had the Practisk. This week we have the Clastic. Uh, some of these some of these names, I'll tell you. Uh, they just keep me coming back for more. Okay, so the Clastic is a beautiful knife. Look at that blade. This reminds me a little bit, just a little bit, of the Gus Ciccini uh, designed 0055 from uh, Zero Tolerance, uh, you know, years back, I guess, at least 10 years back now. So it's some qualities. This thing is beautiful. It's actually a center point, uh, heavily modified Warncliffe or heavily modified reverse Tonto. Who knows? Who knows what it is? Um, uh, but when I say center point, what I mean is that point is a center line. If you look at the uh, the the tip of the pommel, the pivot, and then the point, they're all in a straight line. So uh, why am I saying that? Well, you see a lot of angles and curves. Uh, I uh, So knowing that that point is right at the center, uh, you won't be thrown off by the rather stealth and bat Batman look of this thing. I got to say, like, it's very infrequent to me that something with curves like organic curves match up nicely with something that's very angular. We've seen two already. So maybe I need to change my theory. 
uh, the Bionic Jack has the curves in the blade and then the angles in the handle. Well, this has the angles in the blade and the curves in the handle. And um, man, I think they work. It works on both of them. Anyway, I like this one a lot. Uh, 3.64 inches uh, uh, of, uh, what is this? Oh, okay. This is uh, S35 VN blade steel. Uh, titanium, I'm sorry, S90V. I'm looking at the wrong notes. S90V, a uh, titanium frame lock with a sculpted clip. It also has nice uh, chamfering around it. And of course the uh, branded pivot, which I love. <clears throat> Front flipper and a thumb stud, uh, quite a beauty. It's 4.66 ounces and available now. So go check that out if it tickles your fancy. That's the class, the classic from Best Tech and Jane Arnold. Next up, and this is something I love. I mentioned this from, from time to time. Three of our four stories are collaboration uh, stories with makers and designers and great companies. And that is, the bread, everyone's bread and butter these days, and I love it. I love that kind of collaboration. Uh, this week, three out of four, pretty good. It's usually four out of four, uh, interestingly enough. This week, it's We Knife and Gavco. Uh, Michael Gavick of Gavco Knives has a, a new old design uh, called the Epaulet. <clears throat> Excuse me, and this is a take on his classic spinner model, which is again a modified. I'm not sure. Uh, modified, we'll call it reverse Tonto with a super belly. And uh, it's a flipper with a hole, a blade hole. Uh, but look at that big belly. This thing is, I don't know, I think it's pretty beautiful. It's pretty, I don't know, universally appealing. It's got a pointy blade. So, I mean, you, you could stab it into stuff. Uh, but also it looks utilitarian it, it's got that long sweeping belly it looks like you could use it in fishing uh, i know uh, michael gavick at least he used to uh talk about fishing a lot and a lot of his uh um blades are named after sharks so uh it looks like you could use it for all sorts of uh, purposes like that sculpted titanium handle and clip i love the knurling on the handle it reminds me of a um, boat deck or a ferry deck um, flipper hole, as I mentioned, 3.5 ounces, not available yet, but, uh, excited because, uh, this was just shown in prototype form at uh, blade show West. And we know that, uh, well, Michael Gavick and we have a great, uh, history of collaboration. Uh, next up is from real steel, real steel. You remember that movie real steel about the fighting robots? I never saw it, uh, but real steel, uh, this is, the knife company they have a new baby barlow out it's a little pint size cutter yeah that's right it's a pint size cutter it looks just like a barlow only smaller it's got a 1.69 inch worn cliff blade of 12 c 28 n and here that looks white uh but it is a uh you know silver metal metallic uh version and plain jane so to speak and then a black version there um, 1.69 inch. I mentioned that Warren cliff classic Barlow with the one third bolster there. And then it's got a bail. That bail is removable. Um, check this out. 0. 0.72 ounces, 0. 0.72 ounces, obviously would make a great keychain knife. And if you're going to get one for your keychain, uh, I would recommend the black because it'll wear against your keys pretty quickly and look like you've had it for years and look really cool. Uh, but anyway, that's the Real Steel Baby Barlow, an appealing little sucker. And I got to say, it's got the, um, I want. I wanted to mention that the nail neck here is a little through hole uh, positioned near the very crest of um, that blade spine, uh, giving you, you know, uh, an area to pinch it uh, for that to grab the fat of your thumb and forefinger to pull open. Very, very cool little blade. All right, lastly. Artisan Cutlery and Dirk Pinkerton. Uh, you hear me talk about him all the time. I love his stuff. Uh, this has been one of my favorite knives since he sent it to me. Well, this is hitting the shelves. This is the Artisan Cutlery Kami. It is now available. It's It was uh, recently released, and uh, I thought it was released when I got it, but I was wrong. That's how That's how in the, in the inside I am. Uh, ordinarily, I'm on the outside looking in. But right here, I got this one early, and I love it. I love this. One of my favorite knives of 
ever. Uh, 3.74 inches in this case, S35VN. It also comes in S90V. I know that uh, that is a big favored steel of Dirk. Uh, I have one of his prototypes for the um, the standoff, which is an amazing Warncliffe uh, that you've seen me show here, Warncliffe folder, S90V. He loves that steel. This is the S90V version right here that Jim just put up. And it looks rather nice uh, with that maroon background. You can really see the contours of this thing. Uh, the, the handle brackets so nicely and hand those broad chamfers. That's another sort of Pinkerton uh, signature. Really make the whole thing feel contoured, which is great because you get the best of both worlds. You get the sort of contour luxury feel, but you get the utility of the flat sides. This thing is not turning in your hand. Uh, due to excessive comfort. It's just a comfortable thing to hold on to. Um, and the chamfers make it even better. Uh, it is based on the Kukri design. I don't I, I, We could just look at that picture Jim had up, but it's based on the Kukri design uh, with that downward angle, angled spine and the deep belly and the recurve. Um, but of course, it's also, uh, it's a mix-up. It's a, what do they call a, a, a mix-up, a max, a mash-up, uh, because um, Dirk Pinkerton is big into that, mashing up uh, design elements from different historical periods and different ethnographic uh, signature designs. Uh, this one, though, is heavily, um, heavily Kukri influenced. And Kami, K-A-M-I, refers to uh, the makers of Kukri's, they're called Kami's. Um, K-A-M-I, not C-O-M-M-I-E. Uh, so uh, very excited about this. Um, 3.74 inches, that's the blade length. Uh, flipper and thumb disc. Oh, what I wanted to mention right here. On the S90V that Jim had up there, we can't see the reverse side, but that re reverse, that sculpted clip is Timascus on the fancy pants one, the S90V one. So very, very cool. And uh, quite excited about that. All right, still to come, we have <clears throat> the state of the collection, and then we're going to get into a subject matter that's very important, especially this time of year, and that's that these knives should be in horror movies. But before we get there, I want to tell you about Launch Cart, uh, because many of you are knife makers. Many of you have uh, things to sell online. Many of you may have had trouble with some of the uh, shopping cart companies, uh, but Launch Cart is a, is like a full sales, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's like the American Shopify alternative. I'm sorry, I have to have this. Been very dry today. It is the American Shopify alternative. They will not care what you're selling as long as it's legal. Knives are legal, of course, but I know that people have had some issues with Shopify uh, in selling knives and moving knives. So if you are that person and you have issues uh, with a Canadian company telling you what you can and cannot do, I love our Canadian brothers and sisters, uh, but some of the laws seem wacky. We got them too. Uh, check out Launch Card. And uh, you can go to the knifechunky.com slash launch, as Jim put up there, and uh, check it out. It will uh, help you through the process, and it's not going to hector you and nag you. And, well, that's a good thing. All right, coming up, the state of the collection. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp, crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, the knifejunkie.com slash shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So you know the Beckwith Covert from Fisher Blade Company. Uh, Fisher Brothers, uh, two awesome dudes making really cool knives. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is their first one working together as the new Fisher Blades. We've talked about this knife a lot, uh, both with the Fishers uh, themselves and also just here showing it off. Well, uh, they were kind enough to send me one of their new trainers. And uh, here it is. And that beautiful training, whoa, hit the camera. Sorry about that. In that beautiful training blue. You're never going to mistake this uh, for the real thing, but it feels like the real thing. And actually, it's got a little less weight because it's aluminum, uh, but it doesn't have bevels carved into it. So it, it comes pretty darn close. But the feel 
the feel is excellent. Um, and it's very exciting to have a trainer for a knife that is definitely intended as a self-defense knife, as a, <clears throat> as a last ditch, uh, fighting implement. You know, most people think of knives as last ditch, uh, and this is ready to go right out of your pocket in this, uh, drop clip sheath. So this is the knife. This is the trainer. And it goes right in the sheath. Uh, it doesn't fit exactly. You can tell. I mean, you can just feel an ever so slight difference. But for training purposes, it's 100% good to go. You just might not want to run a full marathon with it. It might work its way out. Actually, uh, I take that back. Because uh, as I look at this, I remember right here, there is a screw with uh, a rubber ring in there. You can compress it by tightening the screw and uh, make it form fit tighter. If I loosen that a little, it will go in there. It will go in there all the way. I mean, it goes in there all the way, but it'll uh, have a different feel. I can adjust it, the feel of this when I'm training to feel like this. So I'm going to do a video with the Bob dummy. First, I'm going to have to practice so I don't look like a total, total babe in the woods. Um, you know, like I did in my fire starting video. Well, I've, I've done a lot more training in, you know, martial arts knife stuff than I have in uh, throwing sparks and making fire. So hopefully I don't make a total fool of myself, but I'm going to show off how this is used ideally and, uh, you know, how it's used against the Bob dummy. And I can't wait. Um, this is the trainer from uh, Fisher Brothers, Fisher Blades. It's Fisher Blades, uh, officially, not Fisher Brothers, but this thing is awesome, and the Beckwith Covert is pretty damn sweet, too. I got two of them, and I hate to brag, but I'm going to, just for a quick second. I have uh, this one, and then I have the Unicorn Edition, which is so cool. Unicorn Editions are, are runs they put out where they change the colors. This one has uh, a gray blade with white um, liners, and, man, it's stunning. Uh, actually... I was wearing the T-shirt that came with it the other day. Uh, the girls like it because it's it got a pink unicorn on it. Uh, all right. So next up, this is from Dirk Pinkerton. Let me see if I can get a little more light. There we go. A little more light here to show off the colors on this handle. This is so cool. This is an incredible, beautiful little gem jewel of a knife. <laughs> uh, from Dirk Pinkerton, it's a prototype that has been picked up by Concept. And uh, incidentally, or they are also working on a folding, little folding version of this. But it is a great melt-in-the-hand uh, utility knife that uh, I dare say could very elegantly transition into a self-defense knife. It's like a mini Yojimbo uh, in, in the blade um, uh, shape if you will, or I guess it, it has the same sort of qualities. And if you think a Yojimbo, which is pretty small, uh, has self-defense qualities, which it ob obviously does, this little charmer, this little utility knife, this little, uh, you know, you can carry it to any work site, any job you have um, with that colorful, cheerful handle and that totally utilitarian looking knife uh, blade, uh, you could have this in your pocket, use it all day long. No one will look at you sideways at least i don't think maybe i'm in my own echo chamber uh, but i don't think they will and uh, so i really 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 like this because uh it would make an ex excellent very close in defensive weapon if you needed it to and i'm always thinking that way because that's just how i think but you're not going to be using it for that thank god you're going to be using it to cut open boxes and stuff and it will not only do that job with a plum but it will lighten the spirit with that beautiful Mexican blanket G Carta. Oh, love that. Man, that's gorgeous. Actually, I don't know if that's GL Hansen and Son G Carta or not, but I love the Mexican blanket look here. It is fantastic. There's Dirk's uh, Maker's Mark. DP, bro. And it's got this really nice jimping that goes all the way up. Feels really good. Uh, set up for, I guess you could do neck carry. Uh, this, I would not do neck carry personally. I would do this uh, in the pocket. Love this knife. Uh, thanks to uh, to Dirk for sending this to me to check out. I will have it, uh, and then I will send it back. Um, <laughs> that was so noncommittal. All right, so here is a new one that I've been using a lot. This is the BPS Knives 
Finn Light. BPS Knives, they're uh, the father-son team out of Ukraine. And they just kind of hit right before the war started, if, if I recall correctly. Uh, they sent me something and they, they sent a bunch of other uh, knife fluencers. Oh, sorry, that was obnoxious. Knife guys, uh, the different knives uh, in, I don't know, what is it, 2023, 2022. And, um, and then that war hit and I was like, oh, damn. But they seem to have been flourishing. Uh, beautiful leather sheath on this, by the way. Um, and I bought this on Amazon. Okay, so this is the Finn uh, Light, and it is 1066 blade steel. It can throw sparks uh, with the 90-degree spine. Uh, it's got a Scandi grind that I'm seeing under the light. I must have divoted whilst uh, uh, jacking around with it in the dark, uh, building fires the other night. I see it now. I see it, but I'll, I'll get rid of that. It uh, doesn't matter. This is an inexpensive work knife. And, uh, but man, how did I put that in there? I must have somehow dropped it. And, uh, cause it looks like, um, looks like I hit metal with it. Uh, it does come with totally raw handles. I, I did a real slapdash job putting some stain on this. Uh, I was in a rush. I took these things off. I didn't take my time, but that's all right. It's got a sort of used look anyway. And, uh, I'm not going to recode it. I'm just going to kind of let it go and see what happens with this knife. I, I like it a lot. Small utility, great sheath, uh, kind of drop it in the pocket, or it's set up for uh, ulti clips or DC, DCC clips here on the side. So I might do that for pocket carry, but I just really like this for carving and kind of the whittling and outdoor kind of stuff I'm doing in my backyard as I do the... Uh, you know, the fire making stuff and trying to become, look, I want to do some camping when it gets hospitable out. I'm starting to accumulate stuff from friends and new, new equipment. And I look forward to that. And knives are a great place to, that's a great place to test out knives. Uh, here's one that, uh, really has me green with envy. Uh, this has been drop shipped to me by, uh, Jock's knife. Uh, Jock, love you. Thank you, sir, for, uh, Passing this through me uh, before I send it to you. This is the Turner CNC Gin. Um, and it is, it's basically a modern Yatagon. It looks like a Turkish Yatagon to me or uh, some sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, arabesque knife. Uh, just beautiful with that sweeping curve, that upward sweep. Yeah, to me, most resembles the Yadagon. So maybe Arab is not the right word, but uh, Arabesque is a, also a term uh, meaning curvy and uh, kind of has that sort of curviness. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Let me get serious here. This back is so close to sharp, uh, but that's an unsharpened swedge. You can get it sharp, uh, sharpened if you want, but I don't think it would take Jock too long to get that thing uh, ready to go if he wanted to. Beautiful curved blade. I'm not sure what this is made out of. Oh, oh, this one is Magna Cut. Uh, sorry, I do know uh, these are both Magna Cut. The two I'm going to show you. It's got a cool little um, marking up here. Now, I'm not sure if that's the maker's mark of another designer. I'm pretty sure that this is a Turner CNC design, but I'm not sure. Or if that means gin in whatever Arabic, whatever language. That might be <laughs> uh, beautiful, beautiful curves on this knife. Now, these are really hard to come by and hard to find out anything about. And I would love to have Mr. Turner CNC on the show. <clears throat> I think his work is beautiful. Uh, I invited him on a while ago. Um, we'll try again and uh, see. Maybe he's uh, maybe he'll be up for it. But uh, beautiful Bowie knife. And then he's got that little EDC Bowie. And he's got this beautiful gin and this thing, the Adobado. Adobada, oh, sorry, Adobada, Adobada, sorry, uh, 3D pr uh, printed sheath, by the way, really cool, pretty sturdy, but look at this thing, yikes, it's a self-defense chef's knife, basically, um, coming in at like five and three quarters inches, um, you've got really grippy, knurled, uh, and uh, pyramid-shaped 
um, G10 that just sticks to the hand. It's very where this is nice and smooth on the gin. This is this is like uh, death grip sticky, you know, death grip grippy. Very thin blade with a just a scandy grind at the very end, and it is just sickeningly sharp. Uh, this thing would just be a terrifying weapon to come up against. It's got this little signature divot here. You you can see the Sneak Reaper logo there uh, with the um, Sneak Reaper skeleton with the Elvia knife in his hand. And here you have the signature divot of Ed Calderon, um, Ed Calderon of Ed's Manifesto. He, uh, all of the knives he uses kind of has that divot and the knives he designs, the Elvias, all the different Elvias made by all the different people, including Turner CNC. And then like the tops, um, El Pioneero that also has that divot and it's to index. When you feel that divot, when you have it in reverse grip, you know that the edge is in. So it's just a way to index the knife. You could also tell by feeling this, but hey, if you're actually using this in a combative way, any sort of indicator, any sort of familiar uh, tactile indicator uh, to tell you how your knife is oriented would be welcome. All right. Thank you, Jock, again, for uh, letting me check these out. They're so cool. They, Like I said, they make me jealous. I guess I said envious, but jealous is a little better. It makes me jealous. That's all. Okay, last up is the Shrade. This I forgot I ordered. This I, I ordered this in the Finlight at, uh, you know, like one in the morning. It was it was after a Thursday night knives. I was trying to fall asleep. I'm laying next to my wife and I've, I've kind of got the light. And then I forgot all about it. And then it shows up. I'm like, what is this? Who got me this? I'm so popular. Oh, it was me. Uh, but this is the uh, Decimate. The Decimate from, from Shrade. It is so cool. <laughs> it is so cool. It is such a beautiful machete. And I think it's, let's see. This is designed by someone named Joshua Wagner. Joshua Wagner. I believe he's done some stuff with tops, but just an astoundingly cool bolo shape blade with that deep recurve, the big belly, uh, total straight spine. It's got a swedge cut into it on the back just for weight reduction, I suppose. Also, if you uh, hit something with that, Sort of look, reminds me of a bone breaker on the back of a knife. And then you've got this handle that's very sort of Filipino and, and also reminds me of an axe handle. It's just got that widened pommel so that it resists centrifugal force as you're whipping this thing around, vanquishing your foes, uh, be they Virginia Creeper and Grapevine or zombies and other type of vermin so yeah this is a very cool one the decimate i actually saw this on kali americano's uh uh one of his videos he's an extremely uh badass talented uh knife combatives guy kali kali and bowie knife man amazing to watch him but he uses uh one of these machetes and i was like what is that have to have it <laughs> so I made sure that I ordered it in an unguarded moment, late, late at night. Uh, you could do that yourself, too. Uh, you might think that that's the way to go. Okay, well, uh, let us get into these knives that should be in horror movies. Um, I put horror in in uh, in brackets, in in parentheses, but really, that's what I mean. It's it's if you're listening to this uh, on the day it's dropping. We're, we're right here at Halloween. This is Halloween, and I want to show you some of the knives that are kind of the scariest to me. Scary and creepy. Here's the first one. This is the only folder of the group, and it is the Lynn Thompson Signature Series Tie Light Chris, 6-inch Chris. Uh, this thing, to me, just with that uh, serpentine Chris blade is just so menacing and creepy looking. and this in particular, now some Chris blades have sort of a straight medial ridge and then just kind of the rest of it waves around it. But this has such a, a, a serpentine uh, sort of waviness to it. It reminds me a lot of the Malaysian, yeah, the Malaysian Chris's uh, that were thinner and wavier. And it's just creepy and menacing. And then you've got the downward uh, hook there. So in reality, you're doing tons of damage with this knife, whether you're slashing and going 
on doing the, getting the bread knife effect and then ending with the hawk bill or just slashing with the tip or you know thrusting with this making that ever widening hole uh with those waves and by the way these are super sharp and if you wanted to make this extra menacing for the horror movie you get the serrated version of this and uh and then you're really really uh well equipped to be a villain all right next up this one is from rib splitter from rib splitter blade works uh we had him on the show. Great dude, uh, making some really cool and interesting knives. He he drops them weekly on Sunday. Uh, he'll do some pickles. Uh, I think he he earned his bones on made his bones on pickles, but uh, he's uh, kind of exploring a lot of other cool knife shapes too. Uh, but this is the draug, and it just turns out, uh, just ends up that a draug is. I believe he said it was. A zombie, like uh, a, a a zombie, like an undead thing from uh, Norse mythology. Now I'm not remembering. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, right? Or is it Russian? Someone let me know. I know someone in the comments knows because you guys are all a uh, hundred times smarter. So please put it in the comments. What is a draug again? Uh, but yeah, it's like some sort of a zombie from some culture. I can't remember what it is. Uh, but undead. And so that's incidental, of course. But just to look at it, uh, um, he does these really cool mustard sort of finishes where uh, different things, but he I know he uses mustard and some other corrosive, um, uh, corrosive, wh what's the word, uh, mediums that he puts on there, spreads on there uh, during and after heat treat. And it eats away at it and gives it a sort of old look. And I love the old look. And then he's got that uh, logo that looks kind of uh, like a brand that you might see on a, a horse or something. So very, very cool. Smooth handle, really comfortable in hand. Uh, just a devastating weapon, obviously. A, a weapon of last resort and and a, a weapon of caveman energy when you're just... Uh, when you've got pure adrenaline pumping through your veins, like this is uh, the kind of thing you want on you. But imagine this in the hands of a villain. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here to this camera, just to show. Like it just it's ugly looking. I mean, it looks scary looking. Uh, you know, you could really see a villain <laughs> going to town with this. Okay, you get it. All right. Imagine Freddy Krueger uh, with one knife. All right. So here is the next one. This one is the Cortada. This is from Fox Knives Italy and uh, Doug Markaida. And it's got the look. It is a horror movie knife to me. Um, even, you know, even the sort of mysterious markings in the handle, I guess, lend to that a little bit. But just the look of this with that horrifying uh, point and that downward edge it it's a total menace it's it's got it's got sort of what the kukri has in terms of an exotic shape you'll see a lot of exotic shapes in this list because uh that's part of the uniqueness of a villain either it's uh, a kitchen knife something taken out of a block and that anonymousness is is scary or it's something totally unique like the cortada or the Chris, where it's like, oh no, this is what I prefer to be a, a bad guy with. I've I've been a bad guy so long. I've settled on this shape. This is the best shape, you know, for being a bad guy with a knife. Uh, to me, this seems like the seems like the sidearm of a villain, um, or in some hands, of course, a hero. But uh, it just has that scary, scary look. And then I got to say, the jimping on the back, which is less. For thumb and more for trapping. Uh, this is for trapping limbs or or what have you of your opponent. If you're in close, and of course you are with a knife, uh, you can do a lot of stuff where you're trapping that person's arm between your arm and the, those jimps, especially if it's in reverse grip. Uh, but it looks like a saw blade. So it just looks like added uh, pain there. And you'll notice on knives like, do you remember the movie Cobra with Sylvester Stallone, the bad guy's knife in Cobra? It was so ridiculous. But it followed that same sort of um, 
logic. Like the more curves and the more spikes coming out of the more in, most inconvenient places, uh, the more scary it looks. And to me, this just looks like a scary kind of thing, like a very scary kind of thing uh, to be to be wielded. I'm thinking, like, who would wield something like that? What kind of a bad guy? Uh, well, you know, I, I don't see, I don't see a Freddy, I don't see a, a Jason Voorhees or a Michael carrying that. I see more of a uh, Korean zombie or a Asian zombie, Filipino zombie carrying that. All right, I'm, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm not a horror movie expert, so maybe, maybe you guys need to tell me what movie that would be in. Uh, it is, it is something. That's creepy, though. To me, this is a creepy knife. Uh, this is the backbite by Tops. It's like, what are you going to do with that? Good Lord. And uh, this is a, a knife designed for, um, uh, oh, by, yeah, that's right, by uh, Despins, C. Despins. And it's designed for uh, close-in fighting uh, in a Russian system of fighting. I'm not sure if it's Sistema. Uh, knife fighting or just uh, some russian form of knife fighting but uh that that hook on the front uh is sh is sharp up here and at the point and that's for like sort of punching and then you've get got all this nasty action back here for your pakal style attack uh but it's confusing and exotic and scary you know pointy curvy slashy um and scary and i think i think the 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 extra elements, you know, in watches, they call them complications, like extra dials or the date or whatever it is. They're called complications. They're sort of like any complication in a knife will make it look scarier because, kind of like, oh, my God, what's that for? What are you going to do with that? That really oblique pointy end. Where are you going to push that? You know, so um, that's what that's what I get out of this knife. The tops backbite. This next one reminds me of Stone Tomahawk, which is a really cool movie. It's not, it's, it's, it's sort of a horror Western it's, to me. Uh, that's what I would call it, a horror Western. Um, but this is the kind of knife a bad guy has in that kind of movie. It is a giant, this is the Svord von Temsky Bowie. And <clears throat> something you got to do in movies is, is, be big uh things have to play large especially props um they made but they can play too large like if you look at the remake of conan the barbarian uh, uh with the with jason momoa all the swords are playing too large it's like they all look like those big plastic he-man swords from the 80s and 90s it it, it it they did a terrible job on the weapons in that movie uh but that said they do have to read. The weapons do have to read. They are props. And in reality, they're relatively small compared to the person and the horse and the set and everything else. So you got to make them big. This one looks like Bowie from a mile away. You got the big uh, blade with the gentle taper uh, to the Ricasso with big clip there and a big shiny part that designates the sharp area that to me is what what takes the cake like you see that and you know that that's the sharp part even even people who don't know a thing about knives like oh that looks real sharp because look at how big the sharp part is it's all shiny and silver uh yeah ready to do damage uh big and heavy plain that's another thing it's not too ornate you can go ornate like with the chris and it's like this guy has uh spent a lot of time uh curating his his killing tools or it's a dude who doesn't care he just likes to kill and this thing is you know fine it's got a wooden handle look it fits in the hand just fine i just pick it up to go do my horror stuff uh so yeah the sword von temsky bowie you could see in a movie i could see in a movie like stone tomahawk or any sort of um uh, country kind of the hills have eyes something like that yeah all right leather sheath by the way but of course it would have to be made out of well you know all right next up this is the only non knife in the list and you probably saw it before but this is the back ripper this is the back ripper tomahawk from wingard wearables it just is weird looking all right you know it's a tomahawk but geez what the hell kind of a tomahawk is that it's got that weird specialized look, uh, kind of like the backbite from Tops I was just showing. 
you know, you recognize it as a weapon, you recognize it as a tomahawk, but I have never seen a tomahawk like that. And what's with that curve? Uh, what could you do with the, that curve? Like you have this curve, which is obviously going to be sharpened on the inside, and this point, which can gouge into anything and tear mercilessly. But why that curve? Well, you know, it's to get you on even another dimension. In reality, it's to form fit to your body so that you can wear it in your pants legs and have this uh, in its uh, Kydex carry system conform to your rounded body. Uh, but you don't have to know that in the movies. Look at that. This is cutting on four dimensions. You know, that's just like a nasty. Um, and, and then and then it's the hooking part. Uh, I'm going to go wide here, Jim. It's this right here. Mm. And then, of course, you have that chopping head, which is angled at such a position that it takes advantage of that arcing motion, that arcing an angle, landing that small one and three quarters inch sharpened uh, blade exactly on where it needs to go. So that angle, which looks kind of funny, really puts that in a devastating uh, position. And then you've got that nasty looking hook. Ooh. So definitely a, a thing of uh, horror. And, and I would, I would um, pair this uh, with the next two knives, actually. The next one is, and I rarely, rarely, if ever, do this. But this is one that I actually made. Uh, this was a few years back. Uh, this is my road warrior knife. I'll show it in the sheath because I'm proud of the sheath. <laughs> uh, but this thing is just a big Warncliffe. It was a scrap knife. Uh, pretty substantial scrap, but it did have a big divot here, so I couldn't make a straight knife. So I ended up making this kind of thing. And I frankly forgot I had this. I need to start integrating this. I really like this thing. Uh, this is AEBL, and I left the heat treat scale on it. And it, this was uh, this was hardened by um, uh, uh, Alex Steingraber years ago, actually. Now he did that, and it took me a long time to actually put... Uh, handles on it i jute wrapped it uh it is a um so why horror movie for this uh first of all it's it, it looks like something someone put together like i did <laughs> and it looks like something that someone put together for uh, a grim purpose you know I, I, I just i just need something it doesn't have to be pretty and i i want a handle that uh, doesn't slip out of my hands when it's soaked and slick uh, and also, uh, if I don't have to work too much by bending my wrist, I'd really love to thrust just straight into whatever I'm cutting and not have to do much work. So, uh, you know, this is really uh, designed for slashing and thrusting. And it's a very easygoing weapon because it fits in the hand. There's nothing extra. Fits in the hand. Great. Uh, you got your thumb up there. I don't even have jimping on this. You don't really need jimping. And you could do some serious cutting with this. Uh, but aesthetically, I think that it is a uh, definitely a, a good bad guy knife. And I think it's a great match with this. Uh, Wingard wearables, uh, back ripper, tomahawk, as is this next one. And I'll just show you this now. This I got at one of the 6th Avenue flea markets in New York City in the early 2000s. And uh, that was a great place for finding, there were these really cool open air flea markets uh, in, in, in these big open parking lots. And you could find so much cool stuff. And the same people came, um, same vendors pretty much. And they, so I had a couple of sword guys and that's where I got some of these uh, swords on from the Philippines back there. And that's where I got this one. And I had a friend here, I'm showing it in the sheath, which is about to come apart, but typical, Filipino uh, two-piece wood sheath, but this one has um, this extra personal stuff, the rope and whatever this little thing was. Um, so it's kind of neat to have. Uh, but this knife, I had a friend, a friend who was a girl, not a girlfriend, uh, who was, you know, I don't want to say she was woo-woo. She was a little bit into the woo, you know. I guess we all have been from time to time. I know I was. Uh, and she picked this one up. There, let me get this one out of the way. She picked this knife up when I got it years ago, and she was like, oh, you know, this one, this one's seen some ugly stuff. And I'm like, well, why do you say that? Just because it's in not the greatest shape? And she's like, no, see, not the greatest shape. That little piece just came off the sheath. Uh, she's like, no, it's not that. Something about it. It's vibes, this and that. And... <laughs> 
uh yeah it is a pretty gnarly uh thing obviously uh not the most amazing you know i don't know maybe it was well crafted um but definitely used and used and used and used uh this is a an all all things all purpose knife i'm guessing the corrosion there i'm guessing this is an all-purpose knife but it has a distal taper from a quarter inch down and it just looks like a nasty bit of work here and you could see uh you could see some sort of a nasty character using it here i'm gonna hold it up here like you've got that downward angle to accelerate the chops it looks like it's been sharpened down from cutting meat for years and years and years and it's got this very generic uh handle i this i'm betting was not the original handle uh, the original handle probably looked something like this with those kind of angles uh, or something like these over my shoulder, uh, but that came off or whatever. So they grabbed a piece of furniture. This is definitely a rehandle, but a rehandle that was done a very, very long time ago. I still believe it was burned in like they uh, normally do anyway. And then I see wads of, of stuff in there and and uh, you know i'm sure it was glued and all resin glued and everything uh that that sort of handle is the handle is what also adds to the menace it's like yeah whatever i can grab and then i'm going to use this oh i i i was a bad guy successfully with this so i'm going to use this forevermore man so yeah shout out to uh lb she she called it man i think this really does seem like it has some of that history. And I showed her some of the others. I had a couple of these others, and I showed her, eh, I don't feel that from that. I'm like, well, you should, because these definitely were in war. Uh, she didn't feel it. All right, uh, second to last here. Uh, this is a sweet one. This is obviously a movie knife. I mean, you know, what else was this made for, if not for the films? Uh, this is the Cold Steel Chaos Kukri. Uh, the Chaos series all have a common handle and it's this which i'm going to be careful with it's this handle knuckle a classic knuckle duster handle i'm going to put it like this kind of looks oh man that it's just wicked so this is cast aluminum and uh it's cast aluminum halves and right yeah and then they're bolted onto the tang and then hafted um and screwed on back here these things are just gnarly okay so this is definitely a noggin knocker this whole thing i've punched trees with you don't even feel it and then of course you've got this ridiculous chaos kukri blade um definitely the mall ninja of the kukris um but man i'll take it i don't care i am a mall ninja i don't care i used to go to eastern arts that's what it was called. I walk into Eastern Arts and walk past all the lacquered uh, shades and everything and walk over to the samurai swords. That's me, Mall Ninja. Uh, but, oh man, Mall Ninja or not, I could lay some devastating waste with this thing. Look at that. Anyone could. Uh, look at that. Your, your weakling cousin could. Uh, you've got that blade that reaches forward. By the way, I think this is a very beautiful and graceful shape, kukri shaped kukri but you got the devastating blade and you got the devastating handle you got the weight and you got the look this is something you could see some giant scarred nasty burned up hand holding and this shape uh, silhouetted in the light with the knuckle dusters and you can't see the guy's face but he's waiting there for you at the other end of the parking lot um geez man draw your weapon draw your weapon all right last up this is uh going back to the classics basically uh this is uh and i'm not being cheeky here this is the station nine partisan number nine and it looks just like the halloween movie knife uh poster movie uh when you watch the movie the blade is a little different it's uh more of a regular kind of chef's knife but this one uh in the movie poster and this knife itself has the straight back and it's more dramatic it's more dramatic, especially if you uh, hold it in a reverse grip, but it almost looks like it's upswept. And that's what lends to the drama, especially if like in this case, it's saber ground and you can see that top grind line ascending up towards the swedge. Um, it makes it look curvy and dramatic. Uh, so I chose this as the final one because it's kind of 
uh, like a horror movie classic that already exists. It's kind of like the Halloween knife, uh, at least from the poster. This, of course, is the Station Nine Partisan based on the um, butcher knives and chef's knives and kitchen knives that were repurposed by the French during World War I to fight in the trenches and repurposed like, in this case, that swedge um, and pointy pointy point i guess uh but that's what these that's what this knife is based based on if you look at it you say that looks an awful lot like a chef's knife well it does and it also looks an awful lot like a uh a french fighting knife uh big signature style of a french fighting knife is that the blade itself is wider than the handle making it the guard and that's where we're going to leave this uh, these are my i mean i got a lot of knives and they could all successfully appear in a movie uh in the hands of a menacing uh horror movie guy villain but these to me are the most dramatic and exotic and exotic and complicated equal scary or simple and um simple and cheap <laughs> looking also is scary Villain at any cost. All right, that does it for me. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. And uh, we will see you then. Uh, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.